In the previous video, we looked at the marginalization property of Gaussians. We saw that if you take a Gaussian here and you decompose it into its first k coordinates and its last or any subset of coordinates, that those marginal distributions, the reason why it's called the marginalization property is because those are the marginal distributions on those subsets. And those marginal distributions are Gaussian. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at the conditional distributions. And let's start out with a similar little example here to get some intuition. So we have the same setup. We have this Gaussian in R2, just like before. And in this case, so what we're, uh, well, this also holds, but we also have the fact that the conditional distribution on X1, given that X2 takes a particular value, is also Gaussian. Maybe I'll just say is Gaussian. Then later in the video, we'll see what the distribution actually is. So when I write this notation, this just means the random variable that we obtain by taking x1 and then conditioning it on this value of x2. So in other words, the density, the random, this random variable, this whole thing here, has the following density, px1 given x2. So let's draw the picture for this also. We drew the picture for that one, so we may as well draw this picture too. So the picture here, maybe I'll draw a similar looking thing, or I could just copy and paste. Let's just copy and paste. No, because I'm going to switch. Okay, sorry. Make up my mind. So I have a, this, this thing here, this Gaussian distribution. Of course, of course, you know, when I do this, it's not actually, the distribution doesn't look like this. This is just a very crude approximation. And now the situation is that we're going to condition on a particular value of x2. So maybe we condition on, let's say, let's say, say right here. Then we just look at the density on this line, on, on this, this line right here. Ah, oh, my pen changed colors. Okay, on this line right here. So we could pick off some of those points. So these, all the points, all those little samples that I drew here, we would just take those. Now, of course, more generally, this, this, is, this is a density function. It's some continuous thing. So the, the claim is that this conditional distribution is Gaussian. That might not be very clear. Let me draw a 3D example to just, um, I scooched down all the stuff from before so we'd have room to do this. Let me draw a 3D example to make this clear because I think it's good to get the intuition for what's going on here. So let's draw, sorry, if I can draw. This will be a, a good test of my drawing skills. So I'm gonna draw a Gaussian here. I'm gonna take this, this guy, maybe I'll do it in blue. I'm gonna draw, this will be like the X1 axis and this will be the x2 axis here. So I took this and I sort of laying it down flat. And now let's ha let's say that the distribution is let's make it a color. The density in the vertical direction coming out of the page is going to be the density. So this will be f of x1 x2 or maybe p of x1 x2 for the density. And so it's this, I'm just trying to draw this sort of 3D thing and something like this. So give us some shading to indicate perspective here. Okay, that's the setup. And now we're gonna condition on a particular value of X2. So maybe the mean is it's somewhere around there. Let's condition on a value like maybe here. We condition on that value, so that's the value that we're conditioning on. And then we just look at the points on this line. Maybe, let me scoot it up a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna look at the points that the, de the values that the density takes along this line. I'm drawing the line on the page, so it's flat. So it's gonna look like this. It's 
going to go along and then it's going to climb up this hill and then it's going to come back down. Oh, okay, something like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's not too bad. So it's just, it's like, you know, you can imagine it's just cutting, it's just on this, we drew the box here. It's just this density function, but we're just looking at the, the cut through that, through that density that goes along that's from this plane right here this plane okay I mess up my beautiful drawing okay so that's the intuition I hopefully you can you can see that what's going on and now let's state the general result just like we did before so we'll go down here we have that was our marginalization property now we'll do in a different color maybe let's do the conditioning property conditioning property the conditioning property says I w the reason why I scooched all that down I so I wanted to keep these pictures together so you could s compare what's going on and then I also wanted to use the same setup here so we're going to use the same setup we have X distributed normally with mean mu and covariance C and I have these same A's and B's. These are the, the indices. And we're going to look at the distribution of XA given XB. Okay, so everything decomposes in this way. And we're going to look at that conditional distribution. And what the property, what this, this fact is, the, the very, very nice fact, is actually kind of difficult to prove this. But the fact is that xa given xb equals some values little xb is distributed normally with mean m and covariance d where I'll put what these are where m equals mu a plus c a b c b b inverse times xb minus mu b and d equals caa minus cab cbb inverse cba now that might may look a little a little bit hairy and and uh, uh just very complicated and it does take quite a bit of linear algebra to actually prove that this is the case. So I'm, I'm not going to go through the proof. But what I would like to do is give you a, 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 a sort of mnemonic, a sort of a technique to try to help you remember this. So before I, maybe before I do that, let me just say that, that this conditioning property is extremely useful, especially in statistics and, you know, when you're, when you're, doing especially Bayesian statistics and also in I'm sure lots of man, many many other situations it's extremely useful because you can just take you know take your Gaussian condition on some stuff and just immediately write down the resulting conditional distribution and um, you don't have to go through all that pain of rederiving it every single time so this is a really uh, really handy thing and so because it's so so useful it's actually probably worth remembering it, you know, so coming up with a technique to, to memorize what it is. So I came up with a, a silly little mnemonic and it's, uh, I hesitate to tell it to you actually because it's so silly, but hopefully I'm gonna tell it to you because hopefully, it, because it's so silly, it will help you remember this. Okay, so first part is for this, this M here. So the first, so it's a little story. I, if I don't know if you f are familiar with um, how world champion memorizing people memorize things, but they use what's called the method of loci, which originated back in ancient Greece or something actually. But it's extremely powerful. Even just normal people can remember lots of things. And so this will be a little variant of that. So this will, so I will give you a little visual story to help you remember this. 
Okay, so it's it's this formula here. So the story is ma, this is ma, so ma, so we have ma here, maybe mom or something. Ma gets in a cab. Ma gets in a cab, and this is our, I'll try to draw a cab here. So Ma gets in a cab. She gets in the cab, and then the cabbie has a gun, and he points it at her. So the cabbie has a gun. He points it at her, and he says, give me all your money. So she, she gives him, gives him her, her money. But then she sees that it's a BB gun. She sees, sees that it's a BB gun. And so she's not afraid, and she grabs the gun, and they struggle. And somehow it gets turned around in the process of, as they're struggling. She inverts the BB gun, so it turns around. So she inverts the gun, and it points it back at the other guy. And they're struggling, and the gun goes off. And it shoots the cabbie. So it X's the cabbie. So the cabbie gets X's. So it X's the cabbie shoots the cabbie and then ma gets her money back so ma gets her money back mu for money b for back and it's minus because she's getting it back so ma jumps in a cab she the cabbie points a gun takes her money she sees it's a bb gun and inverts it then the, the, the cabbie gets shot, X the cabbie, and then Ma gets her money back. So that's, <laughs> that's my silly story that I made up to, to try to, uh, as a way to, to try to, to help remember this. And it's actually, it works. It's so, so such a strange, uh, such a weird little story that it actually is, is somewhat effective to, to help you visually remember what this formula is. Of course, I mean, if you can actually, if you actually derive it or you know how to derive a formula, that's much better than just a simple memorization technique. But in the absence of that, this hopefully will help you. Okay, so that was the first part. And now we need a way to remember the second part here. So this actually is a more mathematical way to remember something. And it actually has something to do with the way this is derived. So for the second part, Note that this looks almost like a determinant. So I I if A and B were just, so if these vectors A and B were actually just one number each, if this was one, if K was one and the N was two, then the matrix C here would be a two by two matrix. And the determinant of that matrix, so we would have CAA, CBA, C. A, B, C, B, B, the determinant of that matrix would be, of course, C, A, A, C, B, B, minus C, A, B, C, B, A. And if we were to move C, B, B over here, sort of divide this by C, B, B, then we would get something that looks like this, at least in the one-dimensional case. So what you can do is think about, to remember this, Remember that it sort of looks like the determinant. But then if you write down the determinant and you think about the actual general case where this is these are matrices now, this is a k by k matrix and this is a this is a n by k by n by, by n minus k by n minus k matrix and this is a this is a k by n and this is an n by k, then multiplying these matrices makes zero sense. And it, the only way to make sense of it is to move CBB in here, and you can think about dividing just very, very heuristically, dividing, and then so you would get the inverse because you divided. And that's, of course, this formula. Okay, so that actually does have something to do with how this is derived. But it's, at, in, you know, in the absence of knowing that, at least you can hopefully, th this is a way to help you remember this formula. Okay, so that's the conditioning property. And hopefully that was useful to help you remember that property.